good day and welcome back to my channel i am working for the next five days so i am doing a three-day trip right now i'm going to be flying from miami to washington dc where i will spend the night and then the next day i will fly to lax where i will spend the night and then on my third day i will fly from lax to chicago and then back to miami and i'll be done with that I'm at the gate early. The plane that arrived, passengers are getting off. You grab a coffee, there's a Dunkin' down the way. Just grab a coffee and just hang out. And I actually did get a white mocha latte from Dunkin' because we were leaving at eight, after 8 p.m. and I just needed that little kick of caffeine. And just like that, here I am, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is an estate. It's a district. DC stands for District of Columbia. Its creation comes directly from the US Constitution, which provides that the district not exceeding 10 miles square would become the seat of the government of the United States. In 1774, the first Continental Congress, a group of representatives from the colonies needed a place to meet. The delegates first gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was essentially a capital city, as the capital is wherever the seat of government is. So here we have a closet. So an iron safe blow dryer mirror. little bar and coffee station, a refrigerator, nice, two beds which is always nice. You can, if you're working, do some work in this bed, reading, whatever, and then sleep in this bed or you can lay out your clothes and things on this bed and then sleep in the other, vice versa. TV, I don't know if this is an internet friendly TV, I hope it is. Um, nice sitting area and let's see what our view is like i'm just going to hang up my cardigan hang up my coat and then i have to put my device to charge put my cell phone to charge put my watch to charge get those all charged up for tomorrow morning and then uh, i'm gonna put on pajamas wash my face put on my face products and I'm going to relax and set my alarm for tomorrow morning. Good morning. It is just before 10 o'clock. It's 42 degrees outside. Uh, I am going to walk to the White House. So I'm going to walk from my hotel to the White House. It is about a mile and it should take me about 19 minutes so it's not very far and then there are some other things to see around there I'm not familiar with the area it's my first time here but i am going to explore i'm going to go out take advantage uh, i don't have a pickup until 3 30 and it's just 10. i couldn't sleep last night i was up early i'm gonna head out I'll grab my coat and let's go see what we can find. Back to our history lesson. George Washington took office in 1789. The capital was New York City, but the 13 northern and southern states wanted a capital that would represent them equally, not too far north or too far south. In those days, all the states were along the east coast from Georgia to New Hampshire. So in 1790, Washington chose a spot in the middle right between the states of Maryland and Virginia. So the weather doesn't feel too bad outside. There's no breeze and the sun is out, so I think that helps. My hands get a little bit cold, but I just put them in my pockets. This building that I'm coming up on, from a distance, I thought it was the White House. This is my first trip to Washington, D.C. This is not so the White this House. This is not this the White is a House. US this Treasury is the building. Treasury. The Treasury Building in Washington, D.C. is a National Historic Landmark Building, which is the headquarters of the United States Department of the Treasury. An image of the Treasury Building is featured on the back of the United States $10 bill. Okay, do you see that in the distance? That is the White House. So, in comparison to the Treasury Building, 
it's much okay, smaller. So what I thought was a White House was not the let's White go House. look. The it is beautiful. Treasury building. Now the White House is next to the Treasury building, and in comparison, it dwar it's dwarfed. So, but let's go look. The White House is the official residence and workplace of the President of the United States. It is located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C., and has been the residence of every U.S. President since John Adams in 1800. There are 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, and six levels in the residence. There are also 412 doors, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, eight staircases, and three elevators. The White House requires 570 gallons of paint to cover the outside surface. And everything looks like it is close together because the monuments are rather large. The truth is they're far away from each other. So I'm now making my way over to the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is an obelisk in Washington, D.C., honoring George Washington, the first president of the United States. Okay, time for a temperature check. It's 50 degrees. Check the temperature because my nose is running because it's cold, I guess. And uh, my body is hot because I'm just been active. It's the weirdest sensation. So it's 50 degrees here. Service, sacrifice, unity, and victory. Through stone architecture and bronze sculptures, the World War II Memorial recognizes the ways Americans served honors those who fell and recognizes the victory they achieved to restore the freedom and end tyranny around the globe. The granites represent the United States. The World War II Memorial has 56 granite columns that represent the 48 states, seven federal territories, and the District of Columbia. There are symbols of the triumph of the country during World War II displayed at the Splendid Fountain Center. The granite columns are in an arch around the Memorial Plaza. There are two 43-foot tall arches on the opposite sides, one representing the victory of Atlantic and the other the victory of the Pacific. This is the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool. It is the largest of the many reflecting pools in Washington, D.C. It is a long and large rectangular pool located on the National Mall, directly east of the Lincoln Memorial. So I just left the World War II Museum and now I'm heading over to the Lincoln Memorial. And like I said, they look like they're close. It's a ways to walk. The walk just goes on and on. I mean, the distance is pretty great. The monuments are so large, they appear to be close together, but they're not. I mean, it didn't look like there were this many steps, but I did a time-lapse video, which turned out to be quite lengthy. The interior of the Lincoln Memorial is divided into three chambers. The central chamber contains the statue of the president, while the two flanking chambers commemorate the two Lincoln speeches that reflected Lincoln's character as well as celebrate his accomplishments during his presidency. The two speeches selected were the Gettysburg Address and the second inaugural address. Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address on November 19, 1863, during the dedication ceremony for the Soldiers' National Cemetery. This address was selected for its familiarity to many, but also because it displayed the President's strength and determination to see a successful conclusion to the American Civil War. 
selected for the North Chamber of the Memorial was Lincoln's March 4, 1865 Second Inaugural Address. That speech delivered just one month before the conclusion of the Civil War creates the policy for reuniting the divided states. The re-elected president firmly believed that the northern states should welcome their southern brothers and sisters back into the Union with open arms. But the feeling among many northerners at the end of the Civil War was anger toward the South for having left the Union. Lincoln's unwillingness to show compassion to the southern people. With malice towards none, charity for all, helped quell the hostility among Northerners. before I head to my hotel, I'm going to visit the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial is the most visited memorial on the National Mall in Washington, attracting more than 5 million people each year. Honoring the men and women who served in the controversial Vietnam War, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial chronologically lists the names of 58,318 Americans who gave their lives in service to their country. The memorial is open 24 hours a day and the names are shown in alphabetical order. Perhaps the memorial wall's most defining characteristic is a visitor's ability to see his or her reflection at the same time as the engraved names connecting the past and the present like few other monuments can. The names, they just, they go on and on and on. They just seem infinite in number. This memorial was the most tranquil. There was a respective peace about it as many gave moments of silence to honor all those who were lost. And as I made my way back to the hotel, I got to see the back of the White House. Okay, so I came back to the hotel. I had lunch. Thought I might have time for a nap, but it's 2.21. I don't think I can get a nap in that quickly. It'll probably make me feel worse. We have like a five hour flight. So we are going to fly from DC to LA and then we'll spend the night in LA. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna make some coffee now and then I have to get my room cleaned up, packed up and then get changed. So LA, here we come. It's time to head to LA from DC. What time is it here? It's 3.30, I think our flight leaves about five o'clock so Five hour flight. Might be close to midnight. I'll have to look at my schedule. But something I like forgot about the time difference. So subtract two hours. We should be arriving around eight o'clock. This is a transcon flight and we got to make Sundays for business class. They looked absolutely delicious. And this is LAX. Welcome to LA. 
LAX's theme building is a landmark of the mid-century architectural style known as Googie. The theme building was named a Los Angeles Historical Cultural Monument in 1993, and it was opened in 1961. Okay, so I made it to LA. It was a long flight, five hours, seven minutes from Washington DC to Los Angeles, California. Business class service, because it was a five hour flight, was full on, full service. So we had like beverage, accompaniment, and then, um, I'm sorry, and before that it was pre-departure beverages. Then it was um, appetizer and then the full on uh, main course. And then we did have dessert and we had hot fudge sundaes or brownies or a fruit and cheese platter. Um, the It was my first time like making the sundaes. So we had various toppings, hot fudge, caramel, strawberries, whipped cream, um, not so there were quite a few people that got sundays with everything on it and they were fun to make a lot of work fun to make though um crew was all fun uh, yeah a lot of fun i'm here in la not enough time to go out and see stuff um it does seem like the hotel is very lively but i'm tired and i think i'm just gonna stay in tonight tomorrow we fly to LA to Chicago, Chicago to Miami, and then that is the end of this trip, but I still work two more days. So that is, that's what's going on. Good morning, LA. Can you tell it's a wet and rainy one? The streets are slick. The weather on the TV says it is 58 degrees outside, but it is rainy. So far, no flight delays. But this is like your typical Southern California rain, it looks like. Um, it's like that fine, sorry, I'm trying to keep the um, glare out. It's that fine, misty rain. So from where I'm standing, it doesn't look very, like it's raining very hard, but we shall see. I found a camera prop, so don't mind the glare here. It was 6 a.m., so it's just after 6.30, I showered. Today was a hard morning to wake up. I wanted to hit the snooze button so bad, but I did not. I'm showered, I blow dried part of my hair. Um, I'm going to get makeup on, properly get my hair blown out, and then I have to be downstairs by 8.15. It's rainy outside, as I sh showed you just before this, but yeah, that, that's my morning in LA, flying to Chicago next. Hair's all done, I got my ends curled. Um, the rain has gotten a little bit harder outside. No flight cancellation um, or delay. I don't think we'd have a cancellation, but anything a delay, but no delay. You know what? I completely forgot it's New Year's Eve, so happy New Year's Eve. I, this will probably, I know this will be posted later after New Year's, but anyways, I wanted to say happy New Year's Eve. Okay, so I'm all ready, I'm all set. I'm gonna head out to LAX. Uh, so LAX to Chicago and then Chicago to Miami. That's how I'm going to spend my New Year's Eve. It is 7.58 a.m. My report time downstairs is 8.16, but if you're there at 8.16, you're late. So I'm gonna head down. See you guys in a little bit. I'm off to fly or I'm off to my office in the sky.
like in a snap of a finger. Thank you, editing. I am in Chicago. I had just enough time to pop in and get some spicy cheese popcorn at Nuts on Clark. So yeah, I'm in the bathroom, but I needed a moment uh, to wish you a happy new year. Okay, hi guys. Let me back it up and explain what exactly is going on here. Okay, all the passengers have to plane. Flight attendants are the last ones off, and that's it. I'm done. I'm done working. Back at my home base, walking out. When I see one of my passengers who I had to help to their seat in Chicago, um, he had a hard time seeing, hard time hearing. He was an older man. Um, he was just walking in the airport by himself. So I approached him, talked to him, asked if he needed help. He was looking for his way out of the airport. Long story short, I don't know how long he was wandering. I don't know how long it would take him to get help, but I got him to where he needed to be. After it was all said and done, because it was New Year's Eve, I was maybe feeling lonely. I was feeling lonely for this person. Um, I just, you know, I think that people, we cross paths with people for a reason. This was a way for me to just start off my 2023. You know what? Be nice. Um, help people. Ask others how they're doing. Um, see if there's something that you can do to make someone's day a little bit better. And that was it. That was how I ended my 20. 22 and ring in my 2023 so i was good after that little minute that i had to take to myself pulled it together felt good about it and that's it that's it that was how i spent new year's eve new year's so happy new year everyone thank you for watching this video um if you watch it all the way thank you for watching all of it if you're interested in seeing more then just like and subscribe or you don't even have to like um subscribe anything you want to see on my layovers or do you have any questions for me just ask send me a comment and let me know thank you bye